Hey guys, it's May May, and today we're playing with all these pretty papers, plus this white one, and acetate. We're actually going to play with a scrap of acetate today. We're going to use a piece about this big, and we'll talk about measurements in a few minutes. But let's get started on this fun acetate birthday easel card. How about that? Three names. So, the first thing I want to do is I want to cut the card base. Now, for the card base, I'm going to use a 12 by 12 piece of paper, and I'm going to cut a strip that is four and a quarter by 12. So basically what I'm doing is making a card base like I always would, but instead of using eight and a half by 11 paper, I'm using 12 inch to give me an extra inch. And you'll see why in just a second. Now we're gonna do some scoring. With my bigger scoreboard, I'm gonna score this first at five and a half. This is where you would score a regular A2 size card at five and a half. But now we wanna make the easel portion of the card. So we're gonna score it at eight and a half, then at nine and at nine and a half. This is that extra inch I was telling you about. We're gonna accordion that up and get rid of it, but we need it for the functions of this card. So once you have those three lines in place, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna take the middle line and score it up or fold it up, okay? And then you wanna crease that down. Now, while you've got it in this position, you can push this card base forward and fold that bottom score line completely down. Now you only have one more thing to do, and it's a little confusing, so I'm gonna flip this over and show you. This is that top score line we did right here. We need to fold it back just like this, and then crease it. I'll show you from the side, we've basically done like an M fold. So can you see from the side how we've done that and kind of taken that weight out? When we do that, when we take that inch of weight or that inch of length out of the front, we now get an A2 size card that is the right size for an envelope. Okay, if you didn't do this, you'd have one that's an inch long in the front. See that? But we also need this for our mechanism, for our acetate. Let's talk about the acetate now. So this piece of acetate I have is three and a quarter inches long by about two and a quarter wide. Is that right? Two and a half wide. The width doesn't matter as much as the length, and here's why. We're going to cut some strips that lay inside of this little folded pocket we've created. We don't want these strips to go past the top of the card, okay? Because There you can see it good. We want that to come just slightly under the top of the card so that when we seal these in, our balloons don't fly off. So here's what we're gonna do. With this piece of acetate, we're gonna make strips that are one quarter of an inch wide by that three and a quarter tall. Now here's the thing about this. You, can you see that one quarter of an inch right there? You want several of these and I have found that one quarter of an inch cuts really well on my uh, rotary slicer, but if I try to go smaller than that, it kind of eats it up. So you guys might see that you can cut an eighth of an inch strip, but I also find that this quarter of an inch strip is nice and sturdy to hold the balloons up once we glue them onto the acetate. So I'm gonna stick with the quarter of an inch strip. Now we go back to the card, and I wanna lay this out flat. This is where our score marks are, okay? I'm gonna use some sticky tape and if I find the end of it here, here's how we find it, there we go. I'm gonna run sticky tape on both sides of that half inch score that we did. After I get it laid down, I'll show you so it'll make perfect sense. So in each one of those um, sides where they're gonna meet and where they're gonna hold the acetate in, we're gonna put sticky tape in. So basically, remember we did three score lines, one, two, three. We have a piece of sticky in between that one and in between that one. Now I'm only gonna release the sticky on one side and that is gonna be for me the top side because I'm gonna work with the acetate pieces on that piece only to start, okay? So now I have my acetate pieces here. These are my strips and I'm gonna lay them into this little crease and stick it down to that sticky tape just like that. See that? I'm gonna do one in the middle, eyeballing the whole thing. I'm not measuring anything. You're welcome to measure if you feel like you need to, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna put one out here to the side, but not all the way to the edge. Um, actually, I'm gonna move that one in a little bit more because I don't want my balloon to hang off the edge. So I'm gonna come in about a quarter of an inch from the side and then about a quarter of an inch from this side. Now, I got the idea for doing this card because I saw these balloon cards made where they pop up on the inside of the card and I thought how cute would it be if we could do a pop-up on the outside and make it an easel because what a neat little thing to give somebody to put on their desk for their birthday I just thought that'd be super cute so now I'm just kind of splitting the middle here and I don't want them to be perfectly lined up so just put your little acetate pieces in ever so often and as many balloons as you would like now 
I'm going to go ahead and fill in, like I'm going to move this one because I don't like exactly where it landed. I'm going to move that in a little bit so I can add another piece. And I'm not concerned about them all being the same length. I'll show you why as we get going. So that gives us, that's an odd number. We're going to go with that. I like odd numbers. Okay, let me move these in a little bit. This is what you'll do too. Just play and get these little pieces where you want them, where you want your balloons to land. And when you put the balloons on, you'll choose the height when you start placing the balloons. Move this one in a little bit more. And I'm good with that. We'll go with that, okay? So now all of those little acetate pieces need a balloon to go on him. So let's do that part. Now I've chosen all these colors um, for my card that I'm making today for balloon colors and this orange. I'm using a punch that is from Martha Stewart that my aunt gave me that I'm in love with and it is balloons. Now for every one balloon on my card, I need two punches because I have to sandwich this on top of the acetate to hide the acetate inside of it. So that's one balloon for the card. I'm gonna do another one. So I've cut four of each of these. So I have four orange, four yellow, four green, four pink, and four purple. And I'll show you what we're doing next. So now you can see I have this shiny gold thread that I'm gonna use to be my balloon strings. And I don't like how it's all kinked up. So I'm gonna take a bone folder and just run this bone folder down it to kind of pull out some of that kink. It's kind of like stretching it, almost like ironing it out. See how much better that looks when you do that? It's still got a little kink, but it is much better than it was when we started. Now this part of the card can get a little fiddly, I understand, but I think it is really cute. Here's what I do. I make a loop in one end and start a knot, but I don't close it all the way down. See that? I leave that little hole. Then I take one balloon, just one paper punched balloon, okay? Put it into that circle and finish that knot off. And the way the end of the balloon is, it will stay in there just perfectly. See how that fits in there? Then you can take your reverse tweezers and you can stick them right on this knot to hold them in place while you continue tying the other knot on top. This one does need two knots, by the way, because if you don't do it, this uh, metallic thread comes loose really fast. So then I tie another knot and pull out those reverse tweezers and just make it really snug. And I trim off the loose end because I don't need it. And it kind of makes the card a little messy in my opinion. So now I have a balloon on a string. I only need to do that to one of each color that I'm gonna use. So if you're gonna use four balloons, you just need to do it to four, but I'm gonna use seven. So I'm gonna tie this string to the front of seven balloons and just leave yourself enough just about like that, just to kind of get the card done. So now as you can see, I have my balloons on a string and my plain balloons. I'm gonna start right here in the middle and I'm gonna pick the color I wanna be the middle and I think I'm gonna let it be the purple. I'm going to take some glue and I'm gonna cover the back with some glue, just a nice thin layer that's gonna be enough to go across the acetate and grab the other side of my balloon so that it can sandwich this acetate piece in the middle. So basically, I'm gonna put this guy right here at the top of the acetate like that, okay? Then on the underneath side, you can see that glue showing, I'm just gonna line this other balloon up right on top of it. The beauty of using the wet glue is you have this time to wiggle and get this guy in place exactly where he's supposed to be and just squeeze it together. Now you can do this with um, sticky tape because I used some sticky tape on one I did earlier and you can do that. So if you just want to use sticky tape, do that. I'm just using the wet glue today. Now, now I'm doing the same thing. I'm going to put the glue on this balloon. I'm not doing it super thick either. I'm just kind of scratching it on there so I get just enough. And then I'm just going to lift this acetate up. And this balloon, I want it to be a little bit lower. So I'm just putting it down a little lower on that acetate and I'm gonna sandwich it with another yellow right behind it. This time I'll just do it facing the front since I showed you the pack, but you see I've lined them up and I'm just putting that acetate right in the middle. This card can get a little fiddly. This is probably not a card you're gonna make 50 of for Christmas time or anything like that. But if you have grandkids or someone special you wanna give a cute little balloon card to, this one is perfect. Okay, so make sure your knots are in the front as well. I think that looks super cute to have the little knots in the front. I'm gonna line this one up about the same height as the other, but not perfectly the same. Put that glue on there, just like so. Turn this where I can see it. I'm gonna drop that one onto the acetate, pick up the coinciding color, and then line it up in the back. 
So I'm just, again, sandwiching the acetate with the two balloons. You could do this with flowers, with butterflies. Can you imagine all the different kinds of balloons you could do? All kinds of them. Now I'm gonna put this orange one on this side. I'm gonna let it go maybe a little higher maybe. Don't know, you have to decide. It's your balloon bouquet. If you want to, you can lay them out and kind of look at them and see how you want them to go. Now you wanna make sure on these outside balloons that they are not overhanging the edge of your card. So when you put them on the acetate, just make sure that when they lay down, they don't hang out the side so that your envelope will still, your card will still be able to go into an envelope. So there are my balloons laying there at the top and they look a little weird now because this messy string stuff, but I'm gonna show you how to take care of that in just a second. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move those strings out of my way. I'm just gonna grab them with my little embossing tool and flip them out of my way. All right, and now I'm gonna peel off this backer and close this down. You can technically close this down ahead of time. You really don't have to wait. I don't know why, I just waited. All right, so now I'm gonna close this guy down and it makes my card an eight and a half by 11 or an A2 size card. Now let's bring those strings back forward and now for the fun part. All right, I'm gonna move all of them but the middle string out of my way, okay? Also, these um, acetate pieces at the top, don't worry about those, we're gonna go back and cut them off in just a second. I'm gonna take a piece of sticky tape just long enough to hold these strings about here in the middle because I'm gonna cover this up with a little banner. So I put a piece of sticky tape down. I'm gonna release that backer to expose it. And now I want to pull the strings snug but not tight. And here's why. If I pull this too tight, it puts some pressure on that balloon. I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna hold that balloon down and just touch that into the adhesive. Do you see that? Now I'm going to take the second string and do the same thing. Hold that balloon down, get it kind of snug, and put it right next to that one. I'm not really putting any pull pressure on it. I don't want it to lift. And then touch this one down. And you want to kind of bring them to the middle because you want them to look like they're tied in the center. Do that one. Now let's come to this side and grab this one. See how when I don't hold the balloon down, I get that kind of lift? That's not what I want. I just want it to touch. Then I'm gonna hold this balloon down and pull this one into place. So I'm not really having to tie all these. I think if I had to tie all these, it would be really fiddly. This way, I'm just sticking them into place. And I'm gonna... So now I have this little strip that I cut an inch wide by about three and a half long. And we're gonna use some of my stamps and use Happy Birthday on here. This is from a stamp set called Happy. You can pick that up at my store if you're interested. I really like this little stamp. So happy birthday. And we're going to ribbon edge the bottoms of this paper. So I'm gonna cut little ribbon edges here. So I'm gonna slice in, and then I'm gonna slice from the corner to the center. And then the same from here to get myself a nice little neat ribbon edge. I'm gonna do it on both sides. I'm adding a little bit of foam tape to the back of this little guy. I just think he'll be cute popped up. Just a little bit right here. It makes it so much cleaner and neater there, doesn't it? Just cleans up that mess behind those balloons really nice. And now we'll work on the inside. Now I'm gonna do some more stamping with these two stamp sets. Shake it and also Birdie says. I think this will be super cute. We're gonna mix these stamps up a little bit. One of my favorite things to do is selective inking. You can also mask off, but I'm gonna show you how to do, how to get just part of your stamp without having to use any tape or any masking paper or anything. We're just gonna selectively ink what we're looking for. So I've put my um, shaky shaky let's eat cakey onto my block and I don't need shaky shaky I just want let's eat cakey because it's your birthday let's eat cakey so I'm gonna take this stamp and just right above that let's eat part ink it up now I hope my head's not in the camera it might be because I'm leaning over and I just want to make sure I don't get shaky shaky but if I do it's no problem to clean that off I did get a little bit so I'm gonna flip it over and look at it I'm just gonna run my finger down and clean off what I don't want. This is literally how I do it. I thought I would show you. So there's that. And now we're gonna stamp this onto our um, page for the inside, a sentiment spot for the inside. It's gonna look just like, let's eat cakey. Isn't that cute? Let's eat cakey. And now I wanna use some, some more stamps from that other stamps that I just showed you. And I'm gonna use the ones that are music notes. 
So now from the birdie says, I'm gonna use these little music notes. I think they'll be cute. It'll look like a party and I like that. So I'm gonna put one of those little music notes on this block, one on this side, and then I'll come back and get some more. So let's get some ink and I'm just gonna go to town, putting some of these little musical notes here and there and everywhere. Just like that, let's do this little guy. Now I have this piece, which is where I got my balloon colors from, and I'm gonna glue this piece down, and I've made it to where that will have a little border sticking out of the color, so you'll be able to see those colors sticking out around this, just to kind of tie all of it together. Super cute, and then we're gonna put this one on some foam tape because it's gonna be what holds our balloons up into place on our easel card. So that's a thicker foam tape. I like to use that one for easel cards. Now on the inside of this card, we're gonna lift this up and I've cut this piece so that it will sit a, about an eighth of an inch away from the bottom and the top. That feels a little crooked. It might be slightly crooked because I've got it crooked, but that's how that piece is gonna look. And so I think you can see that I went all the way around the card and I did some white stitch lines. And just to dress up my balloons, I wanna put some little white marks to kind of look like light, just up in the corners, just so they'll kind of pop, just little half circle so it gives them some dimension and now the card is ready to go and i will show you how it works and we'll turn it sideways to show you you're going to lift the front of the card up and you'll lock this into place now i found that it works really good if you just kind of do this and lean those forward they stand up really cute now the taller you make your acetate and the heavier you put a piece on that's going to make it tilt over so you want to be mindful of that now my balloons are going to fall when i do this but i want to show you what it looks like when it's locked into place it looks like this. Isn't that cute? I just love it. Now you'll be able to see this better in pictures and I'll be sure to put some at the end here so you can see them. And thank you guys so much for watching. Now before you go, I wanna tell you a couple things. For supplies used today, if there's anything that I carry in my store, I'll have a link to that below so you can check that out. And also, we now have a new Meme Made It app. It is an iPhone app at this time. It will also be an Android app soon. If you wanna catch that before um, it goes to a paid version, right now it's a free version, and as long as we can keep it free, we're going to. But you can get it by just going to your Apple store and click, uh, typing in May May in the search and it will pull up for you and you guys can grab the app. I look forward to seeing you guys again on um, Wednesday. So have a great one. Bye-bye.